This week on Maker Update, a circadian sound sculpture, TensorFlow for the ESP32, NVIDIA buys ARM, Flexball, walking triangles, and tapping threads. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're out there doing well, staying safe. I have been cooped up inside dealing with the wildfire smoke here in California all week. It has not been fun. But it has been a crazy week for Maker News and projects, so let's get into it with the project of the week. Check out this interactive sculpture by Derek Gill. He calls it the Circadian Machine. It's a fully mirrored geometric pod that can sense motion, displays light animations and sound, tells time, and alters its actions based on each day's sunlight cycle. The sculpture is this angular cocoon stuffed with addressable LEDs, speakers, an audio amplifier, and a handful of different microcontrollers and relay boards to manage all the different sequences. There are around 50 different actions it can take. Most of them are based around time. It has an Adafruit Feather real-time clock that triggers a display of lights and sounds each time the hour changes. But it also connects over Wi-Fi each day using an Adafruit Huzzah ESP32 to pull down its location and the specific local time for sunrise, sunset, and solar noon, which all have their own unique actions. On top of that, there are also motion-activated events and some Easter eggs all of the actions, though, involve some combination of light animation and sound. For the lights, the color palettes are taken from images of Derek's travels representing different times of the day. For the sound, he's layering chord patterns that are based on the musical principle of the circle of fifths. Morning hours tend to have warmer major chords, while the evening hours tend to be in minor keys, and all of this is being triggered on an Adafruit Music Maker Featherwing board. I love how much thought and detail he's packed into this project. He's using the same boards and NeoPixels as the rest of us, but he's found a way to link them up with something meaningful to him. You can find a link to his full write-up in the description, along with a time-lapse video that goes over the entire build process and points out most of the components he used to create it. Now for some news. TensorFlow has announced that the TensorFlow Lite micro version of their machine learning software is now officially compatible with the popular ESP32 chipset. As a successor to the ESP8266, the ESP32 has become the go-to chip for IoT devices. It's small, low power, and handles both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth communication. As a quick demo to show off its potential, the TensorFlow team includes the code and steps required to create your own face-detecting doorbell system. The bottom line is that, for better or worse, we can expect to see more inexpensive devices that are capable of responding to voice commands or detecting and classifying people and objects in their surroundings. Just how important will AI and machine learning be to the future of electronics and microchips? Important enough for NVIDIA to acquire chipmaker ARM for a reported $40 billion. What it means for makers like us is still unknown, but the press release here mentions artificial intelligence in virtually every paragraph. So if you thought this whole AI thing was gonna blow over like a fad, NVIDIA now has 40 billion reasons why you'll be hearing about it for a very, very long time. More projects on Instructables. Moco has a guide on how he made this flexible PCB ball with 100 addressable LEDs. I have to admit, whenever I see surface mount projects like this, it looks like a total pain in the butt. I have to say, though, I've never seen anything quite like it. The project uses an ESP8285 board, which I've never heard of, but it seems to work over Wi-Fi and can be had for just a couple bucks. For the light animation, Mo is using the Fast LED library, which always looks great. I was also excited to see a new project from Greg Zumwalt. This is a simple 3D printed walking mechanism. Compared to a lot of his recent automata designs, this little guy uses only a handful of parts and you can set him out to walk across the room. A single gear motor connected to a battery provides the drive. It's cute. Now for some tips and tools. On Tested, Adam Savage has a one day build on this thread tapping guide. If you passed it up because thread tapping is a little out of your wheelhouse, give it a watch. Really only 10 minutes out of the 40 minute video has anything to do with the custom guide he creates. The rest is a free Adam Savage masterclass on how and why to use a thread tap, what taps to get, how to improve your technique, and how to avoid common mistakes. On the Make Something channel, David Picciuto swings to the other extreme 
with a two minute video on a technique for making metal rust instantly. With a little salt, vinegar, and hydrogen peroxide, you can create a rust reaction on any ferrous metal. Now, usually you need to take rust off of metal, but sometimes you specifically want that rusty metal look for your project. This is a cheap and effective way to get that done. On Instructables, Woodbrew has a great guide on how to use a speed square. I swear I've watched a dozen different speed square tutorials over the years, and there are aspects of this tool that still remain a mystery to me, but I always come away with some surprise that has me reaching for it again. This is one of the best guides I've seen. On his channel, Thomas Sandlatter goes over his process for tuning his 3D printer and slicer profiles for new filaments. If you're like me, you just slice your model and cross your fingers and maybe adjust the temperature up and down. But when you're ready to level up, Thomas shows you the right way to go to figure out exactly what your filament needs for the perfect print. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their back to school giveaway that they're running until November 12th. College and university students can submit their name and email address for a chance to win tools to kick off the 2020 school year. There's a bunch of great kits and tools being given away. The grand prize is an entire lab's worth of equipment. If you qualify, there's no reason not to enter. You can find the link in the description. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Next week, I'm taking off. I am taking a break from Maker Update, but there will be a show guest hosted by the amazing Sophie Wong once again. So look forward to that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.